Hi everybody, it's Kathy here from Kathy Loves a Scrap and I'm back with my weekly design challenge with Scrap a Sketch. And that Scrap a Sketch www.scrapasketch.com is where you can find premium sketches, printables and stencils. I have this sketch for the weekly sketch from the Facebook group and it is sketch number 113. I've chosen to keep true to the sketch for this one and used photos from my recent cruise with my daughter and they fit beautifully with the sunburst pattern. So I'm using two 4x4 four four photos which is slightly larger than what is in the sketch but it fits nicely. I've chosen some orange and yellow as my theme base. I have this really old basic grey background which I'm using and I have gone through my paper supplies and looked for the colours that matched and I'm going to use white as my um, framing. So sometimes I get asked how do I choose my colours? Well I choose my colours by looking at my photos and I think what have I got in my stash that I can use that's going to pull together nicely and make this layout. As it was a sunny starburst design I thought I'd go with the bright colours of the oranges and the yellows and tone it down with the white. So this is going to be the one that I use as my base and I um, think that it uh, blends nicely with the two images that I've chosen to work with. I'm going to tone it down as I said by using a white border where I've cut out my one inch frame and layered the orange and red basic grey over the top. From there I'm now cutting off the um, branding strips from the paper and I'm going to use two 6 by 12s to start my starburst. Now I'm sure there's easier ways but this is how I do it and I'm not perfect, I'm not um, great at it but I, have, I work it out roughly and as I said for most of my things I eyeball it and just go oh, well near enough is good enough, it looks alright to me. Um, I don't get hung up with it but exact measurement, uh, measurements because if I did that I would never get anything achieved or anything done. So I'm cutting out the pieces that I don't need. Now I think I'm being really clever here and I'm going to keep it all together but as you see as I start to lay it down that is not what happens. I uh, actually um, end up breaking it into three separate pieces so that I can line it up and even then I still don't line it up properly but it works for this layout. So I'm putting down the yellow and that as you can see is reflected in the background. See, told you, make mistakes, move it and that's the best part of the expressive tape, I can move it around. Um, my second one, this one I had to think about it, I wasn't really sure how I was going to get this next part right so what I did was I used the cut out pieces that were left from the previous one to mark up the paper. But as you can see I'm still not 100% sure that I've got it right and I moved the paper around a bit more. And these rays are a little bit smaller um, and that's okay, that's how I liked it in the layout and as I said this is about showing you how to be adaptable with a sketch and use it to suit you. Um, I've just putting this one in the only thing that you need to really make sure is right at the straight edge of the ray because it's lining up with your framing at the edge. All the rest gets covered up by paper and photos so it doesn't matter that it doesn't meet perfectly in the middle. I am mounting my photos on white cardstock and I actually thought I could do it with just the one cardstock piece out of the centre of the background but no I cannot because the photos are a little bit larger so I go and get another piece of white cardstock to finish the mounting but I use it throughout the layout anyway. As I said I mount with my tape and put it in there and that's my beautiful daughter she <laughs> was having a lovely time this was after a nice day in Airlie Beach where we spent the day at the beach in the sun having um, a great time together and then finished with a meal and a mocktail each this here is an a favorite punch that I like to use um, it's the dotted scallop and it's very versatile for lots of layouts so I'm going to cut it out actually, I cut out three, one I do off screen so you don't see that and that's because I come back to it and I'm using it to like I said break down that bright yellow and bright orange and tone it down just a little. So I've decided that I'm going to put this scallop border along the edge of the yellow rays here and that tones it down. I just lay down the uh, double sided tape to hold it in place and 
like I said, I do everything by eye. I just don't measure it exactly. I just layer it and place it down. And that just shows you that it can be, um, you don't have to have all the precision tools to do everything. You can just use common sense, really, and layer it up. Remember, in scrapping, it's about what works for you. All right, so I'm using the back of that orange flower one because it's got the yellowy tone, and that's going to be perfect for my journaling as per the script sketch. So off screen, I went and journaled it just to say what we'd done on that day and what we were doing. And now I'm layering it up with my pieces of scrap. Once again, I go through my scrap and I find the pieces that I've got lying around that match the colour scheme I'm looking for, so nothing is wasted. I put this three panel across here and I'm layering up my photos and I'm actually going to overlay the top of that photo where there's the dead space so that it fits in on the panel. I went and uh, die cut my letters and it says my kind of wonderful and it really was a fantastic day and a fantastic cruise with just my daughter and myself. Um, very special time. And now to build my clusters, that involves a bit of playing around and making sure that I've got the right pieces. So I fussy cut all the flowers out of those two pieces that I had showed you at the beginning. And I've got a mixture of oranges and yellows and I'm just layering them up. Um, there's no wrong reason how I build a cluster. I just play until I'm happy with it. Um, I overlay, I pop up, I choose colours that blend. Like none of these papers are from the same um, range or the same packs. They're just single pieces that I've got lying in my stash and I just went by colour. So the colours all blend nicely so I've got my yellows and oranges and whites and I've got a bit of an olive color in there which is actually on the back of one of them and in a moment you'll see that I use that to build up my cluster more so I'm popping some of them so that they've got dimension and some depth um, when you build your clusters if they're flat um, they'll look flat and just blend in so sometimes it's a good idea to just pop them up a little bit so you've got like a layered effect and that allows the eye to roam over the layout nicely. I'm now using um, a leaf punch that I have, and I use it all the time to build up my clusters, and I'm using the um, olivey tanny colour on the back of one of the papers to build the leaf tones. So I didn't want to go green, I just wanted to keep the tonal colours correct. I've used a white um, signo pen to do my faux stitching around the edges and that brings down that orange layout at the back. Um, so I'm going to just faux stitch it across and put it all together by having this uh, white frame highlighted by the white stitching and it goes together and it's just a quick doodling thing that adds a little bit of detail, I find, to finish off a layout. All right, so now I've gone and gotten an orange one, which at first ran out, and so I had to get a different pen, and that's to go along the journal panel one in the middle. Using uh, the Glimmers Shimmers, I'm using these ones that will dry clear, and that's putting the centres up. I'm also adding some white pearl nouveaux to the clusters so that they finish off and add more detail for the eye. Don't forget when you are doing your layouts that you need to put the date on it because it's important. If you don't journal anything else, at least put the date on it so that in the future you'll know what that happened. So this is my layout. Um, there's my clusters, as you can see. I've got the uh, glitter stickles in there, I've got the Nouveau drops, I've got the layered flowers so that they come up off the page. You can see where the framing and the faux stitching makes the edging just finished and complete. Well, that's basically how this layout came together. Um, it is for Scrapper Sketch, which is um, my creative team that I work with. Uh, this is the sketch that I started with by Lisa, and this is my um, layout that I created and as I said I stuck pretty close to the sketch and pay homage to the sketches when I can. We're at Scrap a Sketch on um, Facebook and Instagram but also at www.scrapsketch.com where you can get 
exclusive sketches, stencils and printables. If you follow me and use Kathy Loves the Scrap 10 at checkout, you'll get 10% off your printables and stencils. As I said, there is a Facebook group and on Instagram, but don't forget, I'm on Instagram. Follow me there and you'll see all of my layouts and the ones that are um, of my older stash. I'm Kathy from Kathy Loves the Scrap, just an Aussie mum scrapping and sharing with you. Hope you found something you like. If you did, give me a like. And don't forget to subscribe if you don't already. Catch you soon.